We're gonna be doing this really cool 3D metallic chrome type effect made by the talented designer Joe Perez. It's a super simple and easy type effect and just uses one Photoshop tool. So let's get to it. So looking at this reference, we see that there's a lot of nice shadows and highlights and it's also really colorful. There's some reds and oranges. We're gonna recreate this. What we're gonna do first is I'm gonna show you how to vectorize this typeface so we could also apply this effect onto it as well. What I'm gonna do is drag this reference into Photoshop, go to image, adjustment, and we're gonna go to hue and saturation and we're gonna put that all the way to the left so it becomes grayscale. We're gonna go to image, adjustment, and then we're gonna hit it levels. We're going to slowly slide the tab to the left and as you can see it's starting to become white and solid which we want. We're going to screenshot this, take it to Illustrator and then we're going to go to Object, Image Trace and then do Make and Expand. And after doing this you can see that it's solidified. We're going to take out the black background color so it's just white. There you have it. We have the vectorized form so then we can start applying this effect onto it. We're going to open up Photoshop, do the width 1500 by 1500. Let's set the resolution to 150 so it's nice and sharp and then we're going to copy and paste this into the artboard. After we have this we're going to duplicate this layer three times. Let's name the bottom one red, middle orange and the top one white. We're going to visually hide the orange and white one so we can just focus on the red. Let's step on the red. Let's go to layers, layer style, and do bevel and emboss. It's going to give you this panel with a variety of different options. Let's make sure that the style is pillow emboss and that the technique is smooth. Now we're going to start playing around with the depth. Let's set the depth to around 282. The size, we could drag it in and out. And then the softness, this will control how sharp that highlight is. Let's set that to around 8. We're then going to go to highlight mode and we're going to make sure that we select that nice red color similar to that reference that we have. And then the shadow mode, let's set that to a nice yellow highlight. Now we're going to go to angle and there's going to be this small diagram that you can drag around to see the results of what the highlights and the shadows can be. And, and a lot of times you just want to play around with this to see what you like. And as we slowly hit around the negative 139 degrees, you see that it suddenly changes into this nice red solid color with that subtle light yellow highlights we want so around that negative 139 to 140 areas let's play around with this and move it a tad bit so I'm really liking that negative 113 degrees. Let's keep it to that. And there's also different ways to control the highlights. As you click on this diagram, it's gonna give you a couple of different curve options. It's gonna control the red and light yellow highlights and also the different ways that light hits this type. So I'm gonna revert back to the original cause I think that one looks the best. Now we're gonna do the same thing and apply that orange color and highlights. What we're gonna do is make that orange layer visible. Up on top, let's go to layer, layer style, and click on bevel and emboss. And as you can see, it already saved what we did on a red to the orange too. So all we really need to do is adjust the color and some slight variations for the particular settings. So let's make this into an orange highlight. Let's play around with that diagram of how that light hits. When I slowly move it to the right, the way the light hits the type changes and moves too. So that's a really cool feature that you can see live happen and then being applied. We're gonna click on the gloss contour graph and just navigate through the different options to see which one we like best. And I'm digging this graph because it gives it a bit more subtle orange color. Next up, what we're gonna do is in the layers panel, we're gonna click on normal and click on color burn. This is gonna help us to blend in both the orange and red colors together. So the highlights will be visible on both ends. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna duplicate the orange layer and title this one darker red. And then we're gonna click on highlight mode. Let's change that color to a darker hue and let's also play with the angle as well so it kind of matches what we have on the reference where the darker red hits more towards the bottom corners of the particular type let's play with the softness size and depth as well let's change the softness to around 10 the size to around 5 and also the depth to around 573 percent after this we're gonna hit the darker red layer color let's left click it or control click and let's hover over to convert to smart object. After this, we're gonna make the darker red section into a layer mask. Let's click on the brush tool and make sure that the color is black. Slowly starting to paint away the darker red color so that nice light orange color shows behind. And this is a faster and easier way to control how this lighting hits where you can paint away certain areas and cause that light to hit that certain area. Especially for the G area, that nice orange highlights on that curvature of the G really nicely. 
After we have this filling good, the last thing we're going to work on is the white layer. So let's make the white layer visible. Click on layer, layer style, and bevel and emboss. This setting is going to be a little different. Let's set the style to inner bevel. For the technique, we're going to hit on chisel hard. Let's play around with the depth. When I scroll to the left, it softens up a bit more. And as I scroll to the right, it becomes a little too hard and chiseled and distorts the shape. So right now, the depth around 95 feels pretty close to the reference that we have. We're going to then work on the size, just starting to play around with it. So we're going to scrub around to see where we feel is a good place. And around 21 feels nice. The softness too, as you can see when we scrub it, it's going to go harder if we go towards the left. And it's going to soften up a bit more towards the right. So let's stay around 7. Let's go back to the size and make it around 16. And then the angle is one of the more important parts. We're just going to slowly start scrubbing around to see where it feels good. Right now, the light hits on the top left area, but from the reference that we have, it hits more towards the right area. So what we're going to do is make sure that that white highlight hits the curvature of the L on the right side and not on the top left side. So we're going to go back to the graph, slowly move that white cursor towards the right area. And there's like a nice sweet spot that we could grab and that 18 degrees feels really nice you can see that white layer adds a lot to this shiny effect and making this type feel that much more 3d and metallic as well so this part is super important in terms of making this overall composition pop out more and that's it guys this is the metallic 3d type effect that we did just using the photoshop bevel and emboss tool hope you found this video helpful and if you did please leave a like if you want to see more videos like these please subscribe i'll greatly appreciate it thanks again for watching and i'll catch you on the next one have a great rest of your day Peace.